What we're going to be looking at here is impairment of uh, long-term assets, and we're going to be looking at two cases here. Uh, these assets, we can either hold them here for use in the future, or we can intend to sell them or dispose of these assets here. And we're going to be looking at both cases here. So let's start out with our first case here where we have these impairment of our long-term assets. And uh, this is where we're going to hold these assets or we're going to hold them here for use in the future. So we're going to be using these in the future. And we're going to be going through this example here uh, for both cases here where we have this equipment as of 1231. 20x1 and in this case we're going to be looking at where they're held for use here in the future. Now what we have to do here for this impairment we have to be looking for significant changes here in this asset to determine if there's any impairment. So let's just go and look at what we're given here. We have an equipment cost here on it of this asset here of or of $18,000 just a piece of equipment here an accumulated depreciation of 2000 so the difference here gives us a book value or a carrying value on this asset here or this piece of equipment of $16,000. Now this is what we have to determine here for um, our impairment of this asset. We have to determine the future net cash flows and in this case we're given that to be $14,000 and then also we have to know the fair value or the market value of this asset here and that we're given here at $8,800. So now, though, based on that, we can test here for uh, what they call here a recoverability of tests. And this is where uh, you compare the future net cash flows. And if they're less than the carrying value of the asset, then you are going to uh, fail this recoverability or this test here. So our future net cash flows was $14,000 uh, shown here. And our carrying value here is $16,000. So we've uh, failed our test here cash flows of the future here are less than the carrying value. So now we can calculate this impairment loss and we simply take the book value or the carrying value here of $16,000 less the fair value here because we're comparing our carrying value here versus our fair value. So our fair value is $8,800 here. So we have a loss here since the fair value here is less than our carrying value or book value. Uh, we have an impairment loss here of $7,200. Uh, $8,800 us taking the difference or subtracting it from our book value or carrying value here of $16,000. So what we would do would be recording this impairment loss here on at the end of the year here 12-31-20-X1. Again our loss on impairment 16,000 book value less the $8,800 fair value of it gives us this uh, loss here of $7,200. Now our new carrying amount here uh, we that would be eight, the the fair market value here eighty eight hundred dollars our fair market value or of eighty eight hundred dollars would be our new carrying amount and we need that here to determine the de future depreciation expense here on this asset since we're holding it for use we're going to be depreciating it here so in this case we're going to say it has a useful life of four years so dividing that into eighty eight hundred we're going to come up with a depreciation expense per year here of twenty two hundred dollars. So our depreciation expense here for 20x2 is going to be $2,200, and that would be for the next four years here. And we recalculated our depreciation expense here based on this uh, fair value or this carrying amount because we assume we're going to continue to use this equipment here. Now let's look at the case here where uh, in 20x2 we reevaluate our uh, a value here or a fair value of this piece of equipment each year here. So in at the end of 20x2 here we revalued it and we come up with a fair value here of uh, an year x2 here of $10,200. Now what we would do here is we compare it to the fair value here that was sitting on our books here of a year x1 here or 20x1 it was $8,800. So what we've had we've had an increase in our fair value here from $8,800 up to $10,000 two hundred dollars increase in fair value of fourteen hundred dollars now uh, the impairment assets held for use here restoration of any impairment loss is not permitted so be just because we had an increase in our fair value we cannot um, restore it here on our balance sheet or income statement because of that here because um, it, it this asset here is held for use so let's just go look at our journal entries here to record our uh, for this uh, 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 impairment here. So um, 
what we would do here uh, for accumulated depreciation, we'd credit that here for $7,200. That was the impairment loss here in 1231 X1, year X1 here. And we would debit on our impairment loss here on our income statement for $7,200. So credit to accumulated depreciation for $7,200. Impairment loss here on our income statement. Debit that here for $7,200. Now, we also recognize this depreciation expense here. So uh, we would uh, increase our accumulated depreciation for $2,200 for the depreciation expense here in 20X2 here. And then we'd also recognize a depreciation expense on our income statement here. Debit that here for $2,200. But just remember here, there's no restoration of the impairment loss here when um, this asset is being held for use in the future. Now let's go back and look at our second case here. This is where you have an, again, I'm we're going through the same example here, except that we're going to, uh, again, for our long-term assets here, but our impairment of assets, we're going to, for intended disposal. What we uh, plan on doing is getting rid of this or getting rid of this or disposing of this piece of equipment. So this is how we'd handle that. It's, it's handled differently when you hold this asset for disposal. Again, the same example here. We're going to be given our equipment cost, less our accumulated depreciation. We're going to have a book value or a carrying value here of $16,000. Again, the same thing. We have to determine the future net cash flows. Same as our first example here. Uh, that was $14,000. And then, again, we'd have to determine the fair value or the market value of the asset here to, to be $8,800. Now, because of that here, we can see we've had significant changes. So, this is again where we have to apply this recoverability test here. So again, all we, and again, it's going to fail this test here. So we take the future net cash flows here, and if it's less than the carrying value here, and then we fail this recoverability test. So again, the future uh, net cash flows here of fourteen thousand dollars is less than the carrying value here of sixteen thousand dollars. So we failed our test here. So now we can calculate our impairment loss here. Again, the same carrying book value or carrying value of 16000 less the fair value here of $8,800. And this is where we have to, in this, is, in this example here, we're going to have some disposal cost on this piece of equipment here of $400. It's cost us an extra amount here, $400 to dispose of this equipment here. So what we do is we just net out these amounts here. Book value 16,000 less the fair value of 8,800 plus we add our 400 on our disposal cost and this would be our impairment loss here at $7,600. And this is what we record here on 1231 20x1 here. This impairment loss of $7,600. Again let's go back up here. So Again, we determined our fair value here was 8800 and future net class flows here $14,000. And then we had our book value here at $16,000. So again, our loss on an impairment, that was simply our $16,000 book value less the $8,800 fair value plus our disposal cost here, it's, it's $400 here. And that would give us a loss on, on our um, impairment here of $7,600. Now, this is the case here where we intended to dispose of this equipment here. So we would have no depreciation on this equipment here because we intended to dispose of it here. So you do not depreciate assets held for disposal. So we wouldn't have calculated any new depreciation right here. Now let's look at the case here where in this case the equipment was not sold here on 1231-20X2. And then it had a fair value of $10,200. So how we'd handle that? Again, we had our fair value here, 20X2, $10,200. We subtract out our disposal cost here of $400. And then we got a subtotal amount here of $9,800. So what we'd have here, uh, we have our carrying value here on 20X2. So we have to calculate that here. So again, let's just go up here. The carrying value here of $8,400, that's based on our equipment cost here of $18,000, less the accumulated depreciation that we have here of $2,000. And then we would be subtracting out our impairment loss here on 20X1 of $7,600. So that net amount here gives us our carrying value here of $8,400. So that's how we calculated our carrying value here in 20X2 to be $8,400. Now you can see here, um, we had an increase, our 
increase here in our fair value less our disposal cost here of ninety eight hundred dollars compare it to the caring value here uh, of 20 uh, x2 here of eighty four hundred dollars so we have a, actually we have a loss on our recovery here and the difference here uh, gives us our loss on our cover here ninety eight hundred dollars that's its fair value and our its carrying value here at 20 x2 was eighty four hundred dollars so the loss on recovery we have an increase here of fourteen hundred dollars so we would uh, recover this loss here and that's because the equipment here was not sold and it had an increase in its fair value so again we revalue each period each period here we revalue this piece of equipment but how we'd make our journal entries here for this uh, loss and recovery again we had our our uh, impairment loss here in 1231 x1 of 7600 credit accumulated depreciation on our balance sheet and then the debit amount here goes to the impairment loss here on 1231 x1 here of $7,600. So that's our impairment loss. Now this is our loss here on our recovery here. So in this case we would debit or reduce our accumulated depreciation here by $1,400 for this uh, recovery loss here and then we'd be crediting or reducing our impairment loss here on our income statement by $1,400. So you can and then the other thing we want to note here there's no depreciation for assets that are held for disposal. So even though we had this increase here, uh, we still didn't uh, depreciate it because it was being held for disposal, even though it was not sold here at the end of the period. So um, because we were uh, intended to dispose of this piece of equipment, we were able to recover our loss here. We recognized our loss on our recovery loss here, and we recorded that here. So you can see the difference here. Uh, we just went through the example where we had the asset that was held for use versus the one that was uh, intended for disposal. And we just went through the same example here, but we looked at um, the different ways that we'd be recording this based on those two different uh, uh, methods here.